Hello, hello. Welcome to the Herbal Moon Goddess podcast. My name is Kyra. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you exactly how you can use astrology for soul aligned marketing. We're looking at your astrology chart in this episode and picking out the pieces to help you find the most natural and effective way for you to market your business and sell your stuff. <laughs> so let's dive in. If you have your astrology chart, go get it so that you can look at it as I'm talking. Um, and if you don't already have an astrology chart, you can easily pull one up at a free site like astro.com where you just enter in your birth details and voila, you have your birth chart. So go get your birth chart because you're going to need that in a minute. So marketing. Marketing is really a huge topic. There are literally thousands of ways that you could market your business. The truth is though that some marketing methods you may try out and it just doesn't feel right. Some marketing methods just don't feel natural to some people. And your astrology chart can really help you understand the marketing methods that are most suited to you, the things that come naturally to you because your astrology chart tells you pretty much everything that you need to know about your personality and your unique strengths and the things that you are just naturally good at. So marketing is definitely one of these things that we can find on your astrology chart. So before I dive in and tell you exactly how to find your unique marketing skills using astrology, uh, I'd like to invite you to the Soul Aligned Business Mastermind. Marketing is just one of the topics that we cover in the Soul Aligned Biz Mastermind. Marketing uh, is something that we go quite into depth with our New Moon in Gemini module where yeah, we pretty much do what I'm covering here on this podcast, but you get my personal guidance as well to help you understand what it all means for you on a personal level. It's all about finding those unique marketing gifts and how do you actually use those? How to actually market your business effectively doing what you're naturally good at anyway. Inside the Soul Line Business Mastermind, we cover so many other things. We are kicking off on the new moon in Aries, which is uh, this Friday, the 1st of April. And our first uh, call topic is all about exactly who you are and your branding. We are diving straight into your astrology chart and doing a deep dive into self-discovery so you can learn exactly what it is that you're here to do. You're discovering your role in this life, the work that you're here to do. And then on that same call, we're also diving into your business chart and looking at the branding for your business. So just from the first module, you're going to walk away feeling so clear on your role, who you are, you're going to create a title for yourself and you're going to have like your branding colors and fonts and everything all picked out for your business. And that's just the start of this epic six month journey into growing your business in alignment with your soul's purpose. If this sounds like exactly what you need to grow your business to the next level and to make more money doing what you love, I invite you to click the link in the show notes below so you can enroll now. Doors are closing. The Soul Lined Business Mastermind will be closed for enrollments after the new moon in Aries on the 1st of April. So if you've been thinking about joining us, make sure you do that right now because after that new moon, you will not be able to join us until the next round, which uh, will be later in 2022. So jump on that if you are really keen to grow your money, uh, grow your business this year and make more money, which yeah, that's growing your money too. Freudian slip. <laughs> so with all that, let's dive into marketing. How how are your how are we going to find those unique marketing gifts on your natal chart? So hopefully by now you've got your natal chart in front of you or maybe you know you've memorized it and that's cool too. So there's two things that we're going to look at in particular on your natal chart to discover your unique marketing gifts. The first thing we're going to look at is the third house on your chart. 
So the house systems are really dependent on having an accurate time of birth. If you have entered in your birth chart and the time is not accurate, then sorry, but the houses are not going to be accurate at all. However, if you don't know the exact time of your birth, that's cool. We can look at the sun houses instead. Uh, this could be a bit more complex. So if you do need a bit of help with that, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Feel free to send me a message on Instagram or Facebook, and I'd be happy to walk you through your chart and tell you exactly which one is your third house. So looking at your third house, the third house is all to do with communication and connection. So how we naturally express our ideas, how we naturally communicate and connect with others. So looking at the third house on your chart, there may be one or two zodiac signs in that third house, and there may also be some planets, or there may not be some planets. All of these things are going to be giving us clues as to your natural self-expression, which really translates to how you can naturally market your business. So let's start off by looking at those zodiac signs in the third house. Um, I wasn't really going to go through all of the 12 zodiac signs and the planets here on the episode, but I might just go through a few. If you do want to go a bit deeper and find out exactly what it means, make sure you do go into the show notes because there will be a detailed uh, marketing astrology thing there for you to download and de decipher exactly what your natal chart means in terms of marketing. So third house. So let's say that you have Aries in your third house. Aries is very ambitious and they love to take action and they can be quite assertive. So if you have Aries in your third house, then that translates to your marketing style as being very boisterous, maybe very in your face. You're very straight to the point. There's probably no like, you know, mucking around and, you know, kind of skirting around what it is you're selling. You're quite likely very direct to the point and perhaps a bit hard selling. Whereas say if you have cancer in your third house, cancer is a bit more sensitive and intuitive. So there's, I, I feel like if you've got cancer in that third house, then you're really tuning into how others are feeling so that you can meet them where they're at and maybe trigger their emotions before leading to the sale. Like there's a very emotional tie if you've got cancer in that third house. As another example, if you have Sagittarius in the third house, that Sagittarius energy can really go deep. So there might be a lot of uh, philosophical or spiritual sort of language tied into your marketing. Uh, you might go really deep into the meaning of things. And if you've got Sagittarius there in your third house and you're a natural storyteller, so you probably benefit from having a platform that allows you to, well, maybe not tell your life story, but like you, <laughs> you will enjoy being able to really express yourself in a detailed way as a form of your marketing. So writing a long blog post or writing a long article for a magazine or newspaper or some other outlet like that would be really good if you have Sagittarius in your third house. So then looking at the planets there in the third house as well can give you some further clues by looking at the energy of those planets. So for example, if you have, let's say Mars in your third house, Mars in the third house could indicate that you're very motivated to be social and to connect with others. And like, you know, this really motivates you when you can go out and make connections with other people and make new friends. Whereas if you have Saturn in your third house, Saturn brings a very challenging energy where you may feel quite challenged by the idea of going out and connecting with others. You may feel shy, introverted. You just may not feel like a natural sort of 
social sort of person. So having it sat in there in the third house may come as a bit of a blockage. However, the thing I love about Saturn is that if you push yourself through that challenge, you will find really good rewards. So if you do have Saturn there in your third house, then don't stress too much. Just push yourself a bit further out of your comfort zone and connect with others and you will really reap the benefits from that. So like I said, if you want more details about the rest of the planets and the zodiac signs in the third house, be sure to go into the show notes, download the guide. It will tell you everything you need to know. So the third house tells us about our communication style. Uh, so we've looked at the energy of the zodiac signs and the planets that may be there in the third house. The next thing that I'd love for you to look at on your natal chart is your Mercury. So Mercury kind of looks like a little person and he's got like a little hat thing on his head if you're looking for the symbol there. <laughs> Hopefully that helps you find Mercury. Mercury is the planet of communication. Mercury is actually also the ruler of the third house. So Mercury, wherever Mercury falls in your chart will help you understand how you best naturally express yourself. So for example, if you have Mercury, let's say in the fifth house, the fifth house is all to do with uh, like children or playing or uh, how you have fun, like at leisure and relaxation. So if Mercury is in your fifth house, then you may find it more natural to talk to children. Like you may make a really good primary school teacher or preschool teacher because you can easily talk to children. You may also find that you express yourself best through play or when you're doing things that you're really passionate about, like when you're involved in like your hobbies or your passion projects. And that's when your communication is really at its best. If Mercury is in your seventh house, the seventh house is all to do with our close relationships. So having Mercury in the seventh house indicates that you express yourself best when you can talk to people in one-on-one -on -one settings. You, you may struggle to, I guess, talk in a group setting. Um, you find it far more effective to get people on their own and to have that conversation one-on-one -on -one rather than trying to talk to a lot of people at once. Whereas Mercury in the 11th house, the 11th house is all to do with groups and the community. So if your Mercury is in the 11th house, then for you, it is much easier to talk in a group setting. For you, standing up and talking to a crowd of people probably comes quite naturally. And you may even find yourself an effective leader in group situations because you can express yourself best when talking to a lot of people at once. So if you want more about your Mercury uh, information, make sure you download that guide in the show notes below. Uh, you'll also find in there information about the zodiac signs. So looking at which zodiac sign your Mercury is in, as well as the house, all of this, as well as your third house, is going to give you so many clues about exactly how you can express yourself the best, how you can share your ideas with others, how you can market your business, how you can really tap into your unique communication skills and use those to advantage in your business. So that's how we can use your natal chart for understanding more about your natural marketing abilities and how to improve your marketing by leaning into those things that you're naturally good at. So there is another way that we can use astrology and marketing, and that's by tuning into the collective energy that's affecting everyone and using that to, I guess, maybe time your marketing efforts or to just understand, you know, what everyone else is kind of feeling right now so that you can use that to your marketing advantage. So a really simple way of doing this 
And I've talked about this in quite a few episodes already on the Herbal Moon Goddess podcast, uh, but that's using the sun seasons and using that energy as part of your marketing. So for example, right now the sun is in Aries. Aries season goes from about the 20th of March through to about the 19th of April every year. So for those four weeks when the sun is in Aries, this is a really good time for marketing things such as starting new projects or uh, like hobbies or self-discovery is a really good theme of Aries. Uh, but like a passion as well. Aries is a fire sign. So thinking about like, you know, what are people feeling really passionate about? What do they really love doing that really sets their heart on fire? And how can you, how can your products or services help them with that energy? So you can look at the 12 zodiac signs to get a feel of those 12 different sun seasons and weave that into your marketing in your business. So for example, in June, when it's uh, Gemini season, that could be a really good time for uh, weaving in things about being more social or going out and about in your local area. Uh, that can be a good time for uh, hosting local events or workshops because with that Gemini energy, people do feel like going out and being social. So maybe there is some avenue there for you to do some sort of event within your business, some sort of local event. So using the sun seasons is a really easy hack to understand what everyone's kind of feeling at the time and how you can weave that into your business to really maximize your results. Another way that you can tune into those collective energies is by going a bit deeper and checking out uh, like where all the other planets are in the sky right now and maybe what sort of angles they're making with each other. So for example, uh, like this new moon coming up on the 1st of April, we have the sun, the moon, Mercury and Chiron, which is the asteroid of deep healing, they are all aligned within like a degree in Aries. And this alignment really is magnifying that healing energy. Like the new moon is all about having a new start. We've got Chiron in the mix, which is to do with healing. You've got Mercury in there as well. It's all about talking and sharing and communicating. So that you could absolutely tune into that healing energy and translate that into your business marketing. Like, you know, if you sell something that's to do with healing, this would be a really good time to say, you know, do you need help with healing? Whatever it is that you heal, this is a really good time for healing. This new moon in Aries is like one of the most potent times of the year for healing. Here's how you can book in. So tuning into those collective transits, if you know a bit about astrology, uh, that can be so helpful. And if you have no idea about astrology and you're interested in learning how to read astrology, it's actually really simple. I break it all down for you inside my astrology forecasting course. So if you're interested, the link for that will be in the show notes as well. Uh, but yeah, tuning into those collective transits, even if you're just like reading someone else's forecast, like if there's an astrologer that you know and trust and they, they tell you <laughs> what's going on in the skies right now, like absolutely use that information and see how you can translate that into your business, into what you're currently offering and use that as part of your marketing strategy. So I hope that this episode has been super helpful for not only uncovering your personal marketing strengths and skills, how you can not naturally market your offerings and services in a way that's aligned with you rather than I guess, you know, trying to do things that don't feel right. Like if it just doesn't come natural for you to be posting on YouTube or on Instagram or wherever, 
maybe looking at your natal chart has given you some clues of something that you could be doing instead, something that's going to feel a bit more in alignment with you and your natural marketing skills. And then we had a look at those collective transits, the sun seasons, that sort of stuff, and how you can use that collective energy to tune in to what everyone else is feeling so that you can market accordingly. So if you do want to grow your business this year, you want to make more money doing what you love, make sure you check out the Soul Line Business Mastermind because we go way more in depth with marketing and so many other things, so many other things like becoming an expert in your niche, uh, self-discovery, magnetizing your ideal clients, soul aligned sales funnels. Uh, we go into business astrology. There is just so much, so much that we cover over six months. And I know that this will absolutely transform you and your business taking you to the next level so that you can align with your purpose and make money while you're doing it. The link to join us is in the show notes below. Make sure you check that out because as I said, doors are closing. There is limited time to join us in the Soul Line Biz Mastermind. Well, I hope that you really enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will catch you all on the next episode of the Howl Moon Goddess podcast. Bye for now.